Hey, everybody, it's Shauna. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Oracle of Light podcast. I am so grateful that you are here. This week, we are going to talk about finding the ways to come back to life after the loss of a loved one or a child. And now this looks different for everybody. This is not this is not something that's cookie cutter for people. You know, a lot of people think, you know, there are five stages, there are seven stages to grief. And yes, there are stages. And I welcome you to look at those resources as a way of sort of navigating your grief. You see, we all have what I call a spiritual toolbox. And now our spiritual toolbox can be filled with a myriad of different tools and techniques and ideas that we can lean on in times of loss, in times of grief, when we are feeling like we need a little bit of extra help. And so your spiritual toolbox will look different than everybody else's. But my hope is that after today's episode, that you will have a few more things to add to your spiritual toolbox. So my spiritual toolbox has meditation, and it has other counselors and coaches that I work with. It has books and podcasts and um, audio books in particular. Um, it has just a, a montage of different learning opportunities for me and things that have helped me over the years. So maybe it's exercise or, you know, sitting and doing a meditation. Maybe it's doing yoga. Maybe it's laughing. Maybe it's just getting out into nature. And so I want to give you some different ways to start making your way back to health and happiness after you've lost a loved one. And after, after suffering the death of a loved one or a child, most of us see no possible way that we can recover or ever again find any joy in living. And now this is something that I've shared, I've shared openly over the years, um, that after my son Jack died, he would have been 11 this year. And we had begun the in vitro process to have him. And I still remember the day that I found out that he was gone, that this was not going to happen. This wasn't going to work for us. I was absolutely devastated. And little did I know, but there was a decision that I made in that exact moment that would take a few years to help me to unpack and fully understand. So even as a medium, I wasn't able to connect with Jack. I just, one minute he was there, the next minute he wasn't. I was so heartbroken, so heartbroken. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't even, I, I couldn't even fathom, couldn't even think straight. So I, I dove into work and I dove into, you know, volunteering at my daughter's school and baking cupcakes and crafts. And just, I tried to do all of these different things. So I didn't have to think about how painful that was. It would be a couple of years after losing Jack that I noticed this span of about six months where all of these things kept breaking. I found a lease. I found a space to lease and they broke the lease. Um, I took my car in to get it fixed and they broke a bunch of stuff they weren't even supposed to touch. Um, the car got broken into. The garage got broken into. Someone tried to break into the house. Um, the computer broke down. <laughs> the furnace broke. Like There were so many things that just kept breaking. And I thought, there's something not right. What's going on? What's going on? So I kept asking and anything that we ask always has an answer. It just depends on how open and available we are to receiving it. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for that answer to show up. And for me, the answer showed up through a meditation and my guides took me back to the moment that I found out that Jack was gone. And in that moment, I decided I was going to be heartbroken forever. So that was the lens that I was looking at my life through. I was going to be heartbroken forever. And it wasn't until I was able to acknowledge that, that I was able to see the impact of that decision. Because in that moment, I was so heartbroken. And it, I wasn't suicidal. I just didn't want to be on the planet without him. I thought, I, I don't want to be here without him. I don't. I don't want to be here without him. I didn't know how to navigate that because Jack is pure joy. His spirit, his soul, his essence is just so beautiful and so amazing. And I could see him growing up with our family. I could see him here in this world, in this reality. So I was absolutely devastated. And once I realized that that was the decision that I made, I could acknowledge it. I was upset. I was angry. I was hurt. I did the ugly cry for several days. And I thought, okay, how do I shift this? 
And then I started to tell myself, I'm not going to be heartbroken forever. I'm whole and complete. Everything's working out for me. Do I love that Jack isn't here in the physical? No. Is there anything I wouldn't do to have him here? No. But I'm 11 years in, so I've come to the place where I accept and I have a different relationship with him now. And so from that moment forward, when I realized I had made that decision, I started to look at life differently. I started to think, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. I don't want to feel like there's nothing that brings my life meaning. I don't want to feel like that anymore. So I started to look at what can I add to my life? And that's what this episode is about. This episode is, is going to help you to start to look at what you can add to your life. Always remembering that joy and grief coincide. This doesn't erase what we've experienced. That doesn't minimize what anyone has gone through. But my hope is that this will help you to fill your spiritual toolbox with a few more resources. And I see my spiritual toolbox as one of those big um, toolboxes you see in like mechanics shops, like, like auto body shops. They're like huge. They're like, what, five feet tall and they have all these little drawers. That's kind of how I see my spiritual toolbox. Some of the, you know, after I lost Jack, my toolbox was empty. Nothing was working. Nothing was helping. And so that was when I realized I needed to shift things. So one of the biggest things that helped me was actually connecting with another medium. And my girl, my wonderful earth, earth angel friend, Laurel, she doesn't do any of that kind of work anymore, but she... I booked a session with her because she's also angelic and I thought I need angelic. I need angel vibes. And the first thing she said to me in that session was, well, Shauna, have you connected with Jack? And I said, no, I can't feel him. I can't see him. I don't know what happened. And she said, well, look up. And I looked up and there was an angel walking into the room, holding hands with a little boy. And Jack ran over to me and to this, mo to this moment, it just, it, it brings tears to my eyes. Because in that moment, I knew that he was okay. I knew that he was safe. I didn't know what had happened. I had such deep shame and, and grief. And I was just so heartbroken that my vibration was so low that I couldn't experience him. I couldn't feel him. I had guilt because I'm a medium. I should have known. I'm, I'm an intuitive. I'm a, I'm a psychic. I should have known this was going to happen. I, there could have been a different result. This isn't what should have happened. I went through it all. I went through all of it not realizing that that was shifting my energy so that I couldn't connect with him. So from that moment, I was able to start to really grieve him, understanding that he wasn't here, understanding that it wasn't my fault, understanding that he was still alive in spirit and I could have a different relationship with him. So reaching out to someone, finding maybe there's a local hospice or there is a medium or a grief counselor or a bereavement group but it's imperative that you find other people that are experiencing what you're going through so that you don't feel alone, okay? So finding support is so, so important, whether that's online, in person, whatever that looks like for you, is to really find someone that you resonate with, someone that you feel like your heart is safe with, okay? Another thing that I found really helped was to make a list of all of the things that brought me joy before I lost Jack. Mm -hmm. I call it my, I call it my, my joy list. And so I would, and this is something that I, I utilize to this day with clients and my coaching clients in particular, I'll ask them, make a list of your joy. What, what brings you joy? And every week you have to make an effort to do at least one of those things once a week. So I sat there and there was, it was one day shortly after I had my session with Laurel I sat there and I thought, what was it that I used to love before this happened? What was it? Who was I? Because I was in the process of becoming somebody totally different. What did I love? I love lip gloss. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I have like hundreds of them. <laughs> I love lip gloss. It's something simple. It's, it's crazy. It's just, I love lip gloss. I love makeup. I love pedicures. I love chocolate. I love the mountains. I love my little dog, Maggie. I love going for walks. I love looking for heart rocks. I love the gym. I love the people in my world. I love the ocean. I love bird watching. I love meeting new babies when they come into this world. So I made a list of things that I love to do before this happened. 
And then every week I would pick one of those things. So that's what I invite you to do is make a list of things. And you don't have to go do all of them at once. I just want you to think in terms of what was it that really brought me joy before this loss? Because it's all still there. It's all still there. Okay. Another thing that I have found helps people is, is journaling, is just getting it out on paper. Because if we don't get it out of our mind, it'll sit in our mind and then we'll ruminate. And our mind has this incredible capacity to go find other things that match that. <laughs> so before we know it, we're feeling horrible and we're feeling even worse. So I will sit down and I'll literally jot down whatever it is that I'm feeling. I have notes all over the house on my phone. Okay. I literally write it down. And I allow myself to vent every thought, every emotion, every feeling, regardless of if they're good or they're bad or, you know, other people have it worse than me. I shouldn't feel like this. No, your feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid. I was ferocious after I lost Jack. I was so angry, angry at myself, angry at God, angry at the doctors, angry at my ex-husband, now ex-husband. I was so angry. But we know that under anger is deep pain. And under that pain is disappointment. I was so disappointed, so disappointed that he wasn't going to be here in the physical, so disappointed that I didn't get to have him grow in my belly, so disappointed that I didn't get to watch my daughter meet him, so disappointed that I didn't get to see him come into this life and be who he came to be and share who he came to share himself with and be. And I just, there was so much, I was so disappointed so journaling will help you to understand the disappointment, the hurt, the anger, all of those feelings. If there's shame, if there's guilt, anything at all, just let it out. Just give it a voice. If you want to write a letter and then burn it, don't hang on to anything that you're writing. Anything like this that's deep, I write it down and then I crumple it up, throw it in the garbage, or I burn it. Or if it's on my computer, I erase it. Okay, don't keep any of this. Just let it go. And then if you love journaling, you may get to a point where you're writing about beautiful things. And we get to a point where we're neutral when we talk about our loss. I'm neutral about my loss now. I can talk about it openly with people. I don't talk about the story. I don't go into the loss in great detail anymore because it doesn't matter. He isn't here. So sharing that, I'm not, I don't want to imprint that energy back into my reality anymore it didn't go according to plan. He isn't here. And we move on. That's how I look at it. So it isn't something that I keep revisiting and revisiting and revisiting. Okay. Something else that you can do that I would really love for you to do is to give yourself permission to take as long as it takes. Just give yourself permission to take it. it it's, it's going to take as long as it takes. And there's no timeline. There's no, well, you should have moved through all these stages by now. You should be feeling better by now. I just, no, you get to feel all of your feelings as long as you need to feel them. The caveat to that is not staying stuck. I always tell people, do not stay stuck. Find someone to work with. Find someone to reach out to. Whether it's your doctor, maybe it's your family doctor, or it's a counselor, again, or a bereavement group, or a hospice group, or a therapist, whoever it is. It could be a medium, an intuitive, a healer, okay? Whatever that is, whatever you're feeling guided to do, start to do that because this is all part of your recovery. This is part of the recovery. So allowing it to take as long as it needs to. I, I didn't... I didn't really know how to navigate the loss of Jack and my husband at the time, his mindset was, okay, it didn't work out. You still have your daughter. It's okay. What do you want for supper? And it was the beginning of our, the end of our marriage because I didn't have support. Jack was as real to me as anyone sitting in front of me. That's how real he was. I dreamt of him for six months. My daughter, Emma, had a list of books that she was going to read to him. She had a big sister teacher t-shirt. Our family and friends knew that we were going to have another baby. My ex-husband named him Jack, right? So he was as real as anyone in my world. And then to have him gone in the blink of an eye was just so, so heartbreaking. So I understand the pain that everyone has been through. I understand that. And I also understand what it took to work through that. 
And there was a day, like I said, there was a day when I decided I don't want to feel like this anymore. I still have griefy days. I still have days where I get triggered, where I feel sad. I wish he was here. Around his anniversary, sometimes when I see other little boys, I think, what would he be like? There's still days when I still have sadness, and that's okay. I allow myself to feel it. Nobody gets to tell me how it should feel or get over it or it's done. It just, it wasn't meant to be. No one gets to tell me any of that. So if anyone in your world tells you anything like that, you should be over it by now or focus on good things or people try to say something because they're not comfortable with the the, the void <laughs> and they feel like they should say something, but they're not sure what it is. And sometimes they shouldn't say anything at all because that actually makes it worse. And that's okay. The other piece to that is, and this is from Brene Brown, it's not everyone has the right, they haven't earned the right to hear your story. So people have to earn the right to hear your story. They do. If they haven't lost a child, they have no clue what it's like. If they haven't lost a partner, they really don't have any idea what that feels like. If they haven't lost a pet, how can they understand what pet loss feels like if they haven't lost a pet? If they haven't lost their mother, their dad, or any other special person in their life, how could they possibly understand unless they've experienced that loss? Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind as well. And really start to just own your loss. Your feelings are valid. You're entitled to feel everything that you're feeling as long as you feel them. But I also don't want you to stay stuck. There should be a point, a pivotal moment where at some point where you think, I want to feel better. And that's going to take some work and that's okay. Because then the universe will bring you whoever, whatever will help you. Okay. Something else I found really helped was to help other people. So I would volunteer. Um, I started the podcast as a way of helping other people. I looked for different ways that I could help. And so you may want to find that as well. Maybe there's someone that you can help. Maybe there's a neighbor that you could help. Maybe it's you know, it's like, it's kind of like Secret Santa, but it's throughout the year. You could do nice things throughout the year without letting people know that it was you. Just do nice things because it's nice. Pay it forward. I always say that on the lives. Pay it forward. Be kind. Tell someone that you love what their shirt, what their shirt says, or their earrings are beautiful, or, um, you know, pay for their coffee. Pay it forward somehow. Find a way to give back. Because in giving back, we help to understand that we're not alone in our loss. And that there are other people that we can help and that we are still very needed in this life, that our life has meaning and purpose and that we can learn to navigate this loss. And so volunteering is, is beautiful. Okay. Something else that's so imperative, so, so imperative is taking care of yourself. You know, this is, there's a part of this that goes with the joy list. But this goes a little bit deeper because, you know, going and getting uh, a new lip gloss or having a pedicure, you know, things like that are fun, but just the basic things like, you know, every Sunday I put clean sheets on the beds and it just feels so good to get into clean sheets, right? It's making sure that I've got snacks and food planned for the week or at least for a few days in my world, okay? It's making sure I'm drinking enough water, stretching going into nature, spending time with the people that fill me up, taking care of yourself to, you know, doing things that make you feel better, getting a, getting a massage, going for long walks, listening to music, sleeping in, having a cup of coffee, exploring the mountains or wherever you live, exploring, you know, reading a new book. Audiobooks are fabulous because I, I can just hit play and I'm tidying up or I'm doing filing and I can just continue listening to my audiobook. <laughs> I love music. I'll put music on and vacuum or do laundry. Um, you know, I go work out at the gym, um, go share a meal with someone, sit and watch the sunrise, sit and watch the sunset, have a delicious cup of coffee. Again, finding things that bring you joy. A lot of you know that Halloween is my favorite time of year. So I'm going to go shopping for Halloween stuff this afternoon <laughs> because that brings me joy. It literally brings me joy. So I want you to make a list of things to take care of you. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, body, mind, and spirit. Our body, physically taking care of your body, resting, having a bath, getting a massage, getting out for a walk, 
mind? What are you listening to? Are you listening to classical music? Are you watching, listening to podcasts? Are you reading books? What is your mind being focused on? And, you know, our, our mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what isn't. So another thing that I love to help people with is you've had a tremendous loss. Yes. I want you to focus on how loving you, how you love to feel in your most valued relationships. You want to feel loved, prioritized, special. You can still feel all of those feelings, even with your loved one on the other side in heaven. Okay. And so, and again, this doesn't minimize what you're feeling at all. It doesn't. If we get stuck somewhere in there, there's, there's something that's, that's stuck. Like we've maybe decided something like I decided I was going to be heartbroken forever, or we have tremendous guilt or, or we think we could have done something differently. There's something that's stuck. So don't stay stuck. If there's something that's not shifting, that's when we need to make sure that we're reaching out. But taking care of yourself, body, mind, and spirit. So with your spirit, you can meditate. If you don't know how to meditate, you can download my free guardian angel meditation. You can download stuff like there's, I love Joe Dispenza. I love Orin Dabin, O-R-I-N-D-A-B-E-N.com. And uplifting music, essential oils, burning a candle, saging. I'll pull out my oracle cards every now and again. Just having beautiful things around me. Okay? So body, mind, and spirit. We want to look at taking care of ourselves. Okay? Next, what else have we got? Doing something different during the holidays. So finding new ways to celebrate. Finding new ways to remember your loved one. We always leave an empty chair. Um, at the dinner table, whenever we have, you know, Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner, we always um, keep an empty chair for spirit, my grandparents, um, Jack, anyone from spirit who would love to join us. We always, there's always an empty space for them. So finding new things, new memories, right? I remember when my grandmother died, she was the matriarch of our family. She made Christmas. They would start cooking and baking in November. She had two freezers in the basement. <laughs> So that was Christmas. You know, it wasn't about the gifts. It wasn't the materialism. It was family. It was eating. It was having fun. It was enjoying each other. My uncles and, and my grandpa, they used to play music. So we would listen to them playing music and sing and dance. And that was what Christmas was about. And then when she died, it just wasn't the same. So I've had, we have new traditions. So we go to spend time with other people. Okay. This year we're on a beach. <laughs> this year we're on a beach. So we've got something new that we're going to create for this Christmas. Okay. Finding new traditions, new celebrations, right? Because again, joy and grief coincide. We can have beautiful moments of joy and happiness and blessings and love and hope. And we also have moments of, of grief still. We have those sad moments. We have those triggers. It can feel like a tsunami, especially if you've had a number of losses. It can feel like a tsunami of energies just coming in. It's just wave after wave. And so, again, my hope is that in listening to this, you're able to add more to your spiritual toolbox. So, doing something different during the holiday times, finding new things to do. Yes, we have our favorite traditions, but find something new. What else could we do? What do other people do? I know my girlfriend, Erin, their family, they always have matching jammies, even the dog, Kevin, has matching jammies. So, they all have matching pajamas and then they take their Christmas pictures. Okay, it's part of their tradition. So they have different traditions. So what different traditions could you have? Okay, what would make it more fun? Spending time with different people. My girlfriend, um, Sharissa, is an incredible baker. She bakes cookies. So getting together and baking cookies with her was so much fun. Oh my gosh. So what else? Looking at the lights. I'm just talking about Christmas, but any holiday, what does that look like? How can we add more ease into our life so that it's not as heartbreaking to have those special times of the year without our loved one here in the physical? And again, knowing that from a spiritual perspective, our soul is eternal. So our, our loved ones are alive in spirit on the other side. And they're so very much a part of our world. So anytime we're leading up to the holidays, you'll probably have more dreams you'll probably see more signs because they're letting you know that they're with you. They're literally a thought away. Okay. And something else that you can do is talk about your loved one. We don't ever forget them. Talk about them. I talk about Jack all the time. My grandfather comes in whenever I'm teaching. He's part of, he's one of the meditations we do. 
<laughs> he loves to help out. So encourage people to speak about your loved one, share their favorite dreams or share their favorite memories of them. And in doing so, we're keeping their memory alive. And in those moments where you're talking about your loved one or other people are sharing stories or memories of your loved one, just know that they're with you in that exact moment. They are with you in those exact moments. And just know, I know that the mental and emotional darkness, it can just seem so overwhelming. And it's so important to find ways that you can start to navigate that and start to bring yourself back to life. And it's so important for us to find different ways that bring us joy, the, to remind us that we can live a life after loss, that our loved ones are still a part of our world and they want us more than anything to be happy, to celebrate life. Life goes by in the blink of a moment, the blink of an eye. And so our loved ones want us to enjoy the little things, find our passions, you know, live our dreams, follow our heart, sing in the rain, fall in love, go for it, leave the job, quit the job, apply for this, apply for that. Tell that person you love them. Write the book, create the podcast, take the trip. Whatever it is that's in your, in your heart's desire, you can still have that and create that because our loved ones are still with us. They're they're with us every step of the way. So here are some things to help you to come back to life after the loss of a loved one. And I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear your comments. If there's anything else that you have found really helps, I would love to hear that. And if there's anything that I can help with, feel free to reach out. If you're looking for extra support, if you are looking to make a connection with a loved one, if you'd like to book a reading, Absolutely. If you'd like to learn how to make that connection on your own, we've got lots of classes upcoming. And Monday to Friday, we're live over on TikTok, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. You can come join me live and hang out. I do readings, I pull cards, I answer questions. Okay. And just know that you're not alone and know that your loved one is still very much a part of your world. I send you all of my love and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>